everybody, and welcome to episode 112 of the TV Knitting Podcast. Hi, my name is Sharon, and I'm also known as Stitch Mistress pretty much everywhere on the internet. So welcome everybody. I hope you all had a good week and are looking forward to some good weather and a nice week ahead. I know that I am. We were going to go up on the bridge today, or the walkway today. However, it is a little bit chilly, so I decided not to go today. So, it's all right. It's no big deal. We, I'm, I have a lot to do around the house today, so, yeah, there's always next week. Anyway, without further ado... Let's get on with the show. I have some introductions this week. I have three people who've introduced themselves in the group, and the first being Lollipop1956. Welcome! And that is Joan from upstate New York, Fulton, New York, which is near where I grew up. I grew up in Syracuse, New York, and I haven't lived there in a long time. 36 years? Yeah. I've lived here in the Hudson Valley near Poughkeepsie, New York for all that time. And I love it here. Okay, the next person is Jay Curry, Joanne from Michigan. Welcome, Joanne. Next is I Knight, Ildico from Michigan as well. Hi, Ildico. Welcome to the group. And I hope you guys are enjoying the show, and yeah, I have a knit-along in the group. This is a good segue. I have a knit-along in my group right now, and that is kind of a story time knit-along where I want you to tell a story about what you are creating, knitting-wise, or crochet. The rules are the project has to be at least 200 yards, one entry per person, it runs from now until July 4th, and July 4th because that is when I'm coming back from my vacation. I'll be vacationing in Florida from about end of June through around July 4th. So, yeah, so I'll talk more about that another time. Anyway, so... Enter that knit along. What you need to do is in the finished objects thread, you can post a story about your project. And I'm loving the stories I'm reading so far. I've read stories, lovely stories about, you know, knitting for other people and why. And it's been really fun to read those stories and I'm chatting in in the chatter thread and I encourage you all to also chatter in the chatter thread because there'll be prizes drawn from the chatter thread as well as the finished objects thread. So one prize I am going to be offering is a Knitter's Pride interchangeable needle set and I don't have the set with me today. I should have it next week. I was going through the needle sets at my LYS and it seems like the best one she has is the Knitter's Pride needle set. I know she has one Haya Haya needle set left but it's the big needles. Size 9 and above. I don't know about you. I don't knit with anything <laughs> pretty much over a size 9 really. Sometimes, but rarely. I mostly knit below a six, a six and below, usually. I mean, even my worsted weight sweater I'm knitting on now, I'm knitting with a 4.0 millimeter needle size six. So, yeah, I, it seems like most of us knit a lot with fingering weight yarns and... We're not knitting with the bigger needles. I mean, of course, those are ex there are exceptions to the rule. Those of you who like to knit all chunky, and that's cool too. <laughs> so anyway, so I am offering up a Knitter's Pride 
needle set, which I hope I will have in my hot little hands next week to show you, plus, plus a myriad of other prizes. I want to use up my store credit from the store. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I've been working on. So you saw last week that I wound my yarn on the show at the end of the show. Uh, right at the end, if you missed it, I kind of did a little montage of me winding. And I am, I am using this beautiful Lisa Souza lace weight yarn. It is a merino silk blend. Here's the tag. Lisa Souza. And the name of it, I don't know. Because when I wound it, I kind of ripped it. <laughs> but it's extra fine merino silk. And it's about 1,100 yards. The winding went well, as you could see last week when I wound this bad boy up. So I didn't cast it on on Mother's Day, but I did wind the yarn on Mother's Day. So that was cool. I am knitting Mystic Star by Anna Dalvey. And this is the shawl. And I love it. It's beautiful. So this yarn. This yarn is extremely fine. I think it's the finest lace weight I've ever knit on and that's completely fine. But it took a little getting used to. So I actually love it. I do not mind knitting with lace weight at all. But when I had it on double points, yikes, it was a challenge, <laughs> especially since it was silk and it was slippery and I had it on metal double points. I started them this on Addy flip sticks and they're not the slickest needle in the world, but they're metal and it was a bit of a challenge. Anyway, let me show you this. So, I'm trying to spread out the lace, but because lace looks awful until it's blocked. So here it is. I did a belly button start. If you see this funny looking thing right here, that's the belly button. And what you do is you cast on the required number of stitches for the project. Oh, I didn't mention, this is a pie shawl, which means that it's knit circularly and it starts in the middle of the shawl and goes out. So you have to do a pinhole cast on, and there's many, many different ways of doing a pinhole cast on. However, I didn't really want to do a pinhole cast on with just the double point needles and the yarn because this yarn, like I said, was so fine. So I opted for a belly button start and I had done this before on another shawl. Uh, Romy Hill has a tutorial for it, but what you do is you cast on the required number of stitches with waist yarn on a double point and then you knit an I cord. So in this case there were nine stitches. So you knit I cord for about eh, half an inch or so and then you start knitting with the, the regular yarn, the yarn that you're going to use for the project. And then when I finish the project what I'll do is I will take the tail and I will 
weave it through the cast on or the first row that I put on with the teal yarn. I'll weave it through all of those stitches and then cut out the waist yarn and then pull the teal yarn closed so it makes a pinhole. And I think it's a great option if you're knitting lace weight. I have done a pinhole cast on with fingering weight and it's fine because it's not, you know, it's more substantial. The project has four charts and I'm through chart A and I'm pretty much finished with chart B. During the setup of this project, the stitches doubled. Then they doubled again after chart A. And now after another four rows, I'll be doubling them again. And I probably should have left it on double points until I doubled after chart B, but I couldn't stand this being on double points anymore. I was losing stitches. It was driving me crazy. This is a 24 inch circular. Probably after I double it again after chart C, I'll probably go up to a 32 inch because it's going to have a lot of stitches. <laughs> so it's actually a very easy pattern. It's just the yarn over is knit two together and center double decreases. It's super easy. The charts are easy to read. And a pie shawl actually for a beginning lace knitter is not that bad because you're never purling and you're never increasing on an edge of a shawl. So say you knit a triangle. So your triangle grows most of the time on each edge. And that seems to be where I mess up this, the shawl the most is on those edge stitches where you have to do your increases. So this there's no increasing in the charts themselves. So you're just increasing after each chart. So the only thing I do have to remember is I have to make sure I mark my rows because you could knit a row twice and not really notice it. Or what I did actually, <laughs> I have to tink back a row after I finish recording because I forgot to do a plain knit row after the pattern row. So there's, this is, you're only doing the pattern on the right side. Well, you're only doing the pattern on every odd row on this and every even row or round you knit plain. So what I invariably tend to do is I forget to do my plain row and that's what I did today in the car. I forgot to do my plain row and I'm knitting along going this looks weird and then I, I was almost done with the round and realized I had forgot to knit my plain row. So that's the only pitfall but that's because I don't pay attention and I'm talking and that's what happens. But it's really easy and taking it out, tinking it not so easy because it's so fine. So what I'm doing when I'm taking out a row around, I am going through the back of the needle. And that's much easier to do than fixing it on the right side. So yeah, I love that project. I would like to finish it before we go away to Florida and bring it with me. I have five weeks. I could do it. I'm hoping to do it. So this is pretty much going to be my main project for the next five weeks till it's finished. So I'm hoping to get through chart C this week. And then I'll only have one chart left. And that's going to take forever because there's going to be a lot of stitches on each round. But it should go fast because I'm only knitting, right? We'll see. 
I'll see how I'm doing with it. I might put some beads in on the edging. I'll see how things are going and how much time I have toward the end. We'll see. Stay tuned. Okay, car knitting. So I'm making some really nice progress on these Desert Vista Dye Works socks. This was my car knitting for part of the week. And I am pretty much all the way up the leg. So I should finish this sock this week. And then I'll cast on the other sock. And hopefully by the end of May, I will just about have two socks finished. So I hope. However, what's been distracting me from my car knitting is my cozy memories blanket. So here she is. And I pretty much don't want to work on socks because I want to work on this. I'm going to be doing this in strips. So I'm going to do a 16 block strip. So I have six so far and 10 more for this strip and we'll see how long it is. Let's see if I'm going to add any more to the length because I really want, only want it as a lap blanket. We'll see. And I put in quite a bit since I talked to you last. I well, no, maybe I only put in three. So I put in this one, this one, and this is those mini skeins that I got last week from With Pointed Sticks. This is the P-Town colorway. And it's super pretty. So I love it. It's going really, really well. I have a little bag of mini skeins in my little project bag and I just what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to kind of coordinate the colors as to what's going to come next. I'm thinking this pretty pink will come next to coordinate with this pretty square or maybe I'll put it on this side. I don't know. Maybe I'll put it on this side. We'll see. I can see why people are addicted to these blankets. And I bought my blanket a little present last week. <laughs> so, inspired by Diane, Suburban Stitcher, I purchased some needles to make my knitting more enjoyable. Now, Diane purchased signature needles, and I actually had them in my cart, and I was going to buy them in size twos. However, I changed my mind at the last minute because I said, do I really want to spend $40 on these? And I might not like them because I'm kind of on the fence whether I like signatures or not. I won't talk about why today, but eh. So I decided to buy these on Amazon, and they are Chaogu, and they are a size 2.75 millimeter, size 2 American needle, and they are a straight. And I rarely knit with straights. But I love it for this blanket because these are short. They are 7 inches and my DPNs are 6 inches. So the DPNs aren't quite long enough when I pick up stitches in between, but these are perfect. So I am loving these. And like I said, Diane had them in signature and they were the seven inch and I said, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that. And I'm enjoying these chogus. Now, I'm not a big wooden needle fan. 
I'm just not. I just I'm a metal girl. I like the slickness of the metal, even though stitches jump off my needles all the time. I just know how to fix them. It's not a big deal. But I like these. They're pretty slick for a wood needle. And they're nice and pointy. So, yeah. These are great. And they are really perfect for this project. So I know I mentioned to you that at work I have a knitting buddy, which is awesome. And a couple of years ago she emailed me a picture of her Cozy Memories blanket. She had started one. And she emailed me and she said, is this ugly? <laughs> and I said, no, I love it. Everybody's knitting those. And she didn't believe me. So I got her hooked on watching podcasts. So she's been watching everybody knit these. And now she's really, really into this blanket. And now it's really big now. Hers is gorgeous. Um, I'll see if I can get a picture of it this week. And so we decided we're, we're kind of swapping mini skeins. And I know that tomorrow she's going to come in with a bunch of mini skeins for me. And before I recorded, I spent a little time winding some mini skeins for her. So I didn't wind them into skeins. I just wound them into balls. So these are all going to her. There are 23 of them. No, I'm sorry. There's 21 of them. And they're all from projects that I have knit in the past. And I also have little balls all rolled up for my project. So it's fun. So she's going to come in with some for me. And it's just so much fun. That's what's great about these memory blankets because you can have swaps you remember who gave you the yarn it's it's super super cool now last week I had a question I had posted on Instagram that I was recording and did anybody have any questions and someone asked me what pattern I'm using for this and the pattern is called O oh Memories and I don't know who wrote the pattern but it's just a basic Cozy Memories pattern, and I'm not really following the pattern so much. I'm following how she's putting the squares together, but I'm not following the pattern as she wrote it because I'm casting on a different number of stitches, and I'm doing this center double decrease to make the spine. So, but this blanket is loosely based on the O Memories pattern on Ravelry. It's free. So what I'm doing for this blanket is I'm casting on 45 stitches and I'm knitting. So on the right side, if, when I start my first row on the right side, I'm knitting I'm knitting 21 and then I slip stitch 22 and 23, knit stitch 24 and pass the two slip stitches over stitch 24 that I've just knit. And that's what makes this spine. And I like how that came out. Now my friend doesn't do it that way. She does it the other way where you do I think an SSK or a knit two together, I'm not sure, to make the the decrease. So there's lots of different ways you can knit this blanket, which is what's fun about them. Next project is Big Old Coat by Hohi Locatelli. And if you want to see this on me, two episodes ago, episode... 109. I tried this on. So it's coming along really well. It's getting nice and long.
I've knit about 11 inches here and I have to knit a total of 18 so I'm getting close seven more inches I made a mistake though <laughs> so I'm knitting on it the other day and I'm looking at it saying this doesn't look right did you ever do that and it's kind of hard to see because it's a stitch pattern and it's dark so I'm looking at it and I'm seeing I know right here where my finger is there's a line of stockinette and that's correct but then when I look here I don't see that anywhere so I know I made a mistake so I have to rip out a bunch of rows and it's not a big deal. I have no idea what row I'm on, but I can read it and figure out what row I'm on after I rip it. So, womp womp. Not a big deal. But it's going great, and it's so cozy, and I love it. I brought it to work one day and showed it to my friend, and she was like, oh my gosh, you're going to live in that. And I said, yes, I am. <laughs> Next winter when it's freezing. So the only other thing I'm knitting is Trillion by Martina Bem. And I am knitting it out of Woolen Vine Yarns in the Outlander colorway. And I'm knitting it during the show, during the Outlander show, and also during Game of Thrones. So I'll knit on it tonight. I knit on it last night during the show and it's coming along nicely. So speaking of Martina Bem, I wanted to show you a little project that I completed last year at this time and I had it on before but I got hot so I have it back on because I wanted to show you. It matches my shirt really well. But look at it, it's very short and let me talk about it. So I could not wait to knit this project. I thought I had what was going to be the perfect yarn for it. And the name of the project is Lully, L-E-L-L-Y, by Martina Bem. Peekaboo. <laughs> anyway, it's got the mesh that I love. And it's supposed to be a poncho-ish, a poncho shawl, but it is small. And it looks weird when I try and wear it as a poncho. I just can't get it to look, oh, that doesn't look so bad, but I don't know. I just don't like the way it looks as a poncho because this neck opening is really big so I'm wondering maybe if I seam it a little bit maybe take it in a little and I have a smaller neck opening it wouldn't look so weird I hope so. I might try that and see but meanwhile, I've just been wearing it just wrapped around my neck. I had it on the other day at work. And because I'm always cold. So I had it wrapped around my neck and I asked my friend, I said, does this look weird? You know, because it's so sh short. And she said, no, it looks fine. And it's funny. I wore a little neck warmer shawl to work the other day and it was going to be a warm day it was going to be in the 70s and a co-worker said to me do you always wear a shawl <laughs> even in the warm weather and I said well it's cool this morning so I put the shawl on so I took it off when I went down to do my little thing that I do in the morning with the kids and teaching the kids I went down I leave my office and I go down do some work and I froze. I was so cold. 
because I didn't have my shawl on. And I've just gotten used to having my neck covered, I guess. So that's why I knit shawls a lot, because I wear one almost every day during the school year, unless, it's get, unless it gets to be, you know, like those hot days. We don't have air conditioning throughout our building. So when you have an, a day above 85, it's really hot. <laughs> so anyway, um, so that's the story of Little Lully. Beautiful color. The yarn is... Miss Babs, Shiruku, in the Deep Sea Jellyfish colorway. And I love this colorway. It's beautiful. I adore it. So I brought it to Florida with me last year. This was my Florida project for last year. And I wore it, you know, out to a restaurant. But it's, I don't know, it's, I was hoping it to be like kind of a poncho-y thing, but I didn't have enough yarn, I guess. So... I've been making some really nice progress on my spinning, but I'm not going to show you that today. I want to show it to you next week so you'll really see that I'm almost finished. So I don't think I'll be finished finished with it next week, but it's really getting there and I'm very excited about it. It's coming out really, really nice. So that is it for today. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about today, please leave a comment on YouTube or in the Ravelry group under the show thread or under the Ask Me Anything thread. It's called Ask the Stitch Mistress. You can ask me any question. I am putting links to everything that I talked about on YouTube. So... If you go to the YouTube page for this show and you look underneath, there is a description box. And in that description box are links to everything. So while I'm talking about something, you can pause it and go down and look at it if you're interested. Because a lot of times I listen to shows and, you know, it's kind of hard to find show notes and whatnot. It's really nice on YouTube. I can put everything I talk about right below so it's easy to find. So that's where, the only place you'll find show notes or links. Again, if you want to ask me questions about the links and whatnot, you can ask me in the comments section on YouTube. And I've had a lot of great comments on the shows. Thank you so much for those of you who comment. And it seems like everybody's enjoying the show. Just, yeah, just make a comment if you would like. And I'm open, open to suggestions as to how I can make the show better or something you want to see, something you want to hear about. So, yeah, let me know. All right, so with that, I hope you guys have a great week. Happy knitting. Cheers.